Let me turn off this music. We don't need that anymore. Uh, today we're going to be playing some Fate Core System. It is a game made by Evil Hat. Is, is that it? Is it like a, like a yeah. company? I don't know. <laughs> just Evil Hat. Yeah, it's made Evil. by Evil Hat. It could just be one guy, just yeah. out of the company. No, I'm pretty sure it's made by more than one person, though. Uh, it's it's just one hat. It's just an evil hat made this game. It's fine. No, uh, but yeah, it's a it's a tabletop role playing game. It's uh, have you ever heard of Dresden Files role playing game? Or I think there's some others that use it. Uh, it uses fudge dice. I that are like d6s with a plus on one two sides, minus on two sides, and a blank side on each side. So if you guys see us uh, rolling like weird dice in Roll20, that's what's up with that. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll get into it. It doesn't actually have a set setting. We've come up with a setting that I'm pretty excited about, and I hope you guys will be too. Uh, but if you guys want to introduce yourself, uh, VG is going to be the game master for today, so if you want to introduce yourself. For today? For, uh, for yeah, this so... Game. Uh, <laughs> to the millions of viewers that follow me wherever I go on Twitch, um, I am VG Gnome. Uh, I hit my early stardom back in Dungeon World um, on Derek Stream. Uh, after that, you know, you all you all came and followed me from there. No, I just uh, looking, you know, had a lot of fun with Dungeon World when we played that, um, and you know, it's it it was really really great. And I just decided, you know, this is something I could do, and I want to do more of. So here I am trying to. Uh, uh, DM uh, our first campaign. Uh, and then uh, you guys might know a couple of the other people. Renzo, you want to introduce yourself? R I think you might want to unmute Mike. R Renzo, <laughs> you want to introduce yourself? Ah, it works. I, uh, of course, you guys know me. I'm Renzo. I've been a long time friend with uh, with Derek. I've been a mod in his chat, so. As you can see, we're conversing. But uh, I played once before with them, uh, the group. As Derek usually has a few people on with him. I uh, played back when you did Pathfinder, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Derek? Yeah, when uh, it was me, then, you, uh, Drag. Pookie, Pookie. Drag, uh, a few other people. Yeah. can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. And figured why not just join in with this one as well yep uh and you might know jen as well he's a moderator he's here all the time go ahead jen if you want to introduce yourself i am here literally all the time i make fun of derek <laughs> constantly <laughs> and uh yeah i'm the chicken overlord as some of you may know uh I have a fan that is currently no, going at like no. 9,000 rotations a second, so... Consuela. <laughs> Consuela, back to the room. I have no idea how to play this game, so I'm looking forward to fucking everything up. Yeah! <laughs> and then we have, a, we have a new person that you guys might not have know, but uh, if you want to introduce yourself, Dakota. Or... Hello, I'm Dakota. Um... You don't know me, and I like I like to look directly bad. into the camera. Speak to the people, and I'm terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> um, you will obey. Let me. I I'm the political officer of this entourage. Yeah, of this. Uh, let me, let me just give you the pitch that VG gave me when he was like, "I'm going to invite my friend." You guys might know this. He said, "He's drag without the lewdness." So. <laughs> That's gonna be real good. I'm excited about this. <laughs> no, and then we were like, Dreg is, and you were like, but Dreg is just lewdness personified. And I'm like, yeah. So my friend is just personified. No, he's just a person. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a person. <laughs> Take he's a like normal guy. Oh, but anyway, I'm gonna throw it over to you, VG, if you want to get us started. Let me get my shit out here. But go ahead. Yeah. All right, so uh, starting out today, we are going to be doing game creation, character creation, and if we have any time, we'll start uh, with the actual campaign. To be fair, um, we have done a little bit of the character creation already. Yeah, I mean, so we've, it, we've so been it. looking at our own characters for a while. I mean, aside from Dakota, um, we've all had uh, quite a while to think of uh, what characters we want to we go to and, and we want to go. 
Um, I guess to give an introduction to fate um, would be ideal for anyone that's, that's watching. Um, so fate is, is a tabletop role-playing game that, again, has same similar Dungeon World, has an emphasis on story. Um, unlike Dungeon World, it doesn't have uh, a set setting in... Uh, in Fate, you come up with your own setting, you come up with the world that you're in, the problems that you're going to have to face, and what your characters are going to be, what their motives are and what they're going to be doing in the story. Um, it has uh, a couple of interesting extra rules uh, in terms of how the play goes with challenges, um, contests and conflicts that will come up. Um, but just on a first cursory glance, it's again, it's a lot about the story, it's it's not about the role so much, and it's about uh, just hanging out with your mates. So, uh, I'm happy to get underway and start talking about what setting we're doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I guess if anyone does want to change the setting now, uh, now is the time to speak. Um, but you I think may get most stabbed. of us are pretty keen. <laughs> most of us are pretty keen on the setting that we're starting with. So everybody uh, I've even home, mentioned the setting to is like, dude, that's I, awesome. <laughs> I, I would like to uh, be chicken overlord of a planet. Just so you know. All right. Chicken overlord. <laughs> the chicken. So that's planet. the setting. All right, we'll cross Jin that one out. The yeah. <laughs> Let's just veto that. that. Anybody else? Record. Anybody else have any no, ideas? No. The jury will ignore that last testimonial. Um, so what the setting we're looking at doing is going to be essentially bounty hunters in space. Um, yeah, it's going to be like... We're a... going to have a style around a steampunk or a, a cyberpunk kind of world where you have, you have hacking, you have augmentations, you have ships, you have attachments to those ships... Um, and we are going to be part of a, a bounty, ho bounty hunter mercenary group um, that go around systems trying to get some money from these bounties. Um, we're altering the game slightly in terms of inventory. We're going to have an interesting money-based system where people can purchase upgrades to their their frames, their bodies, their minds. Yeah, if you're, um, if you're... And they can also... Good. I was just going to say, if you're familiar with Fate, you might know that there's a resource uh, skill instead of normal money. Uh, we've done away with the resource skill, and we're going to be tracking money basically as normal in an RPG. So, because yeah. I think we're going to have like so, a little focus on money. So, yeah, but essentially, uh, it is going to be a world where the players are going to want to succeed in their mission. Because if they do succeed and they do make these monies from bounties, then they get to, you know, uh, upgrade their ship. They get to buy a ship. They get to, you know, change the way that their skills work um, by augmenting their bodies, their minds, uh, as was mentioned. So there is going to be a lot on the line when it comes to these bounties, um, and the players are going to want to succeed. And if you don't succeed, and you start losing cash because you know living costs money, fuel costs money, we all pay rent. So um, no, that's going to add up. And when you start running out of money, you're going to have to use your skills in, in less than uh, moral ways and less than ethical ways and start having to, to scrounge for money and do some nefarious things. Uh, and which you will also, if you get caught, be punished for, you know, with, uh, with being hunted or, um, or being exiled from planets. So um, that's the setting we're going for, or at least we've we've talked about before. Does anyone want to add anything to that? Does anyone have any ideas that we can add on to that? Uh, not for the basic stuff, but that? just just to talk to the the audience real quick. I mean, we are still going to do care uh, do world creation. There's like other stuff we have to do for world creation, but that's just our like basic idea. That's the pitch for uh, yeah. for our setting. So we're going to be doing world creation first, I think, right? Yep, that's what we're going to do first. So does anyone have any, like, just any thoughts on that setting? Does anyone want to change that slightly? Just just so that we can lock that in and completely tick it off and say that's what we're going for. I think I'm good here. Yeah, as far as, the, sure. as far as the basics, I'm good. I mean, like, details and stuff, we're going to come up with in a minute anyway. So And it's going to come out through yeah. story, All making right. our so, characters and stuff. Once uh, once the setting has been agreed upon, 
then we start looking at the world that we're in, right? So um, we kind of already know the scale that the world's going to be um, because it isn't just, you know, we're not just talking about one city. We're looking at multiple star systems. You know, we're looking at traveling to different planets and all that kind of stuff. So I think we can all agree that the scale is going to be universal or at least galaxy style. Um, but we need we need to talk about um, what what's going to be driving this world and what's going to be in this world that uh, you know like organizations, federations, you know what what's going to be uh, holding this world together as it may. Like for instance, come up with some ideas like how are you going to travel from one planet to the other? Are you going to be using warp gates? Are you going to be using um, warp drive on ships? You know all that stuff is is going to influence the setting in, in how I build the world and how we build the world, sorry. Uh, as far as mode of transportation, feel free to jump in on this too, guys. Um, I was feeling kind of like the... Like, my, my idea for this is the future where we have lights technology, but it's all, like, patched together and, like, breaking down, and it's all kind of shitty technology, but, you know, still we have really advanced stuff. And I think to fit along with that, I don't think that it would make sense for us to have, like, our own on-ship warp drives. Uh, yeah. So yep, yep. I'm, I'm thinking maybe, like, a, yeah, like, jump gates or warp gates or something like that. You know, like, Mass Effect style. <laughs> or, you know, there's tons of other things. So is this kind of stuff. If we go with warp drive, like, warp gate style, mm -hmm. that does lead us into... Um, like, it does give us a, a set point where we can say, okay, this is where you might have to pay to use the gate, or you might be able to hack the gate or something like that. Whereas if it's on your own ship, rather than having, like, a, a cost involved or rather than having an ability to hack involved, then you're talking about ship repair yeah. and the state that your ship's in. So would people be more interested in a world where you're paying for travel or you're able to hack and, and do travel like that way? Or be interested... <laughs> yeah, or be more interested in a world where... And, and in that sense, also remember that, like, if you have warp gates, per se, mm -hmm. um, any ship can travel from planet to planet. You don't have to have a ship that has warp drive or is capable of that. Whereas if you have a situation where your ship needs to have a warp drive, it, it lends itself more into a ship focus and more into a, I mean, um, you know, are we going to keep the ship in repair? Really, we could do both. And, like, at the beginning, where we're, like, really down or low, we don't have a lot of money, maybe warp drives are, like, super expensive, and they're, like, the, the like, top-tier thing, and everybody, like, like yeah. yeah. Like, because uh, like, then that gives you a lot more freedom, right? Like, you get a warp drive, and that gives you a lot more freedom to go wherever you want, whereas warp gates are kind of like, you know, like you say, like, public, public transit, yeah. and you have to go to this to get to this other this spot. Basically yeah. an analogy for someone who can't afford a car. Yes. Yeah, we're, we have, have a bike. Have drive, you have to drive with your parents everywhere. <laughs> we're taking public transit really or a bike. I just imagined, like, bounty hunters in, like, trench coats and, like, spiked <laughs> gloves riding a train. They're just like, sup. Plus, that would kind of... <laughs> some kind of <laughs> space bus. <laughs> Plus, that would kind of open it up for the fact that, like, right now, we have to take bounties that we can get to. Because we don't have a warp drive. And then later on, we right. can take the higher profile yeah. bounties where we have to go out in like in uncharted sectors and stuff like that because there's not going to be warp gates there. Like so we would have the swan. So yeah. what what I'm thinking that everyone's kind of alluding to is we start off with warp gates mm -hmm. and we associate a cost with using the warp gate or some kind of way of getting around the cost, whether it's like nefarious or not. Yeah. And then as as we start accumulating funds, then we can eventually add in a warp drive to our system, which and gets maybe, rid of that cost from going from bounty to bounty, but at the same time, you then have to work on maintenance if it gets damaged or something like that. And maybe, you know, like uh, like the high higher-up people and, like, presidents of planets or whatever and stuff like that, you know, like, rich people would have warp drives on their ship and stuff like that. Like, it's a, yeah. it's a status thing, too, is what I was thinking. Will it be a big thing in terms of like any kind of chases or mm -hmm. um, escorts or anything like that as to, you know, if you're chasing someone who has a warp drive, no mm -hmm. dice. You know, yeah. like warp <laughs> drive is basically a, you know, an easy way to get out of uh, a chase um, 
so he'd warp drive for somebody who doesn't anyway. So I think I think we're pretty happy on that as a technology that we'll yeah. we'll have, right? Having I think having both. Okay, makes so sense and... yeah, um, we should then look at what kind of organizations are, are running this world. Like, um, are we going to have a united federation? Are we going to have you know like basically um, what one one of the thoughts that that uh, Derek and I and, and I think everyone ha- might have had would be do we have like warring um, organizations that are you know they control certain star systems um, in general so that when we go through this world and when we have influences in this world those organizations will shift and change and they can be good bad ugly and different in mm-hmm. in their own special ways I think so I personally think that we should because it would add more friction and stress especially on us and add for yeah better and like it's speci- especially if we're a mercenary bounty hunter group or the organization the big organization we work for that organizes the bounty hunters or whatever we're going to do with that either way it makes sense for there being different organizations and maybe we would gravitate towards one eventually and like you know like this one thing we like like their ideals and stuff like that uh but at the beginning you know there's different factions fighting each other they all have different bounties and i think I think that makes it very lucrative for us. Mm. Like that makes bounty hunters well, very guess lucrative. Some something has to pay these bounties, right? I mean, obviously there there might be some some way of like you can put a bounty on someone as a a person, but do we want these to be more sort of official bounties, like put forward by some form of government that is uh, that is like, paying these? Some like moral and government. immoral kind of stuff. Yeah, like yeah, I mean like. It, there's two ways of doing bounties. There's like I, you know, I put a price on someone's head, you know, under the table Jabba the Hut style bounties, mm-hmm. and then there's also you know like an actual this person is a criminal, so we're putting a you know a, a wanted sign on this person. I don't, I don't know about uh, having it a government or the under the table thing. I'm something that I was thinking about like just now was we could have like there could be like an organization uh, for bounty hunters, and basically people people send in bounties to the bounty hunters and they figure out what jobs they want to put uh, like on the board or whatever and see if people want to take those or whatever. Kind and of that, as if it was a guild? Yeah, yeah I was thinking fighters guild. Kind of like a guild, yeah. Like that, I think that makes sense. And it, especially if there's like a d- bunch of different broken up kind of governments, if we're in like a whatever, like yeah, like there's a bunch of different kinds of governments and they're all like warring with each other, that makes sense that a uh, uh, bounty hunter group would open up because that would be a very lucrative time to actually be a bounty hunter because mm. there would be all kinds of different factions being like hey I want you to go get this war criminal and bring it back and that would also These allow us yeah. yeah well just they're all dilapidated so it... like you were you were saying yeah. there's warring states and then they have to bring in these private military contractors essentially to fulfill these mm-hmm. high risk kind of little bounties yeah they don't have time for it themselves, so they they go like. Or they don't have the resources. And is this going to be like? Mm-hmm. Is this going to be Fighters Guild? And Fighters Guild is a very morally conscious group that want to like their aim is to save the world. You know, I, is to. You I know, think it's more a Thieves Guild in the fact that they're looking to make money. They're making it like yeah. instead of morals, they're they're economically conscious. You know, like they're they want they want money. Whoever's paying the most. So, yeah, I'm just kind of thinking as to like. Are they going to have a motive that is clear, or is, you know, like in terms of like even the thieves guild? Uh-huh. If you look at them, they, they they have morals that are you know don't kill and and they want a general purpose. Like they have a bias into what bounties they take because that forwards their. Quality. Oh yeah, I think there would be biases between like towards what kind of bounties the the bounty hunters would take. But what what I'm saying is I don't think we're nece- they're necessarily like the good guys of a like you know they're okay. bounty hunters. They're looking to make money. And they would probably have their own, like, system. I mean, yeah, if you're going to have an organization, you've got to have at least a few ground rules. Like, otherwise, it's not really an organization, is it? <laughs> so. All right. So let's let's just say there's a bounty hunter organization, right? Mm-hmm. They're going to get contracts from um, political and government uh, and perhaps even, like, individual agencies that come forward to them and say, this is the money you'll get for this bounty if you post it on your bounty board, which all the bounty hunters see, kind mm-hmm. of thing. Is that, and then like anyone can go to them, like whether they're good, bad, or anything, 
they can all go to this bounty guild uh -huh. and put up bounties. Yeah, is that what we're looking at? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, but obviously, you can still get you can still get bounties in other ways. Just like you talk to anyone, and they might give you money to to kill someone. Exactly. But uh, but that would be your main source of why you're going to a planet. And, and the thing I think about that is, as far as actual story, is that like opens it up for us to be to find our own moral center and mo like our own our own morals instead of like you know having to follow the morals of a government. Just taking the bounty or yeah. Yeah. Like we're like, yeah, we want to we want to help this group out, <laughs> this one particular government out because we like what they're doing. We can be like, we can take, or, we're gonna take all their bounties. We're gonna help them out, or we can be like, <laughs> we've got to help them because we're gonna be screwed if we don't. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think that opens up a lot of like relationships with all the different governments too, and like our reputation within those because you know these guys seem to take a lot of bounties from our enemies. I don't know. You know, I think I think that all opens right, up a so, lot. If everyone's keen on a, a bounty guild, what are we going to call these guys? This is not something we I have know. a name. <laughs> we have a name for this organization. All right, let me go find a name generator. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Best way ever. Organization name generator. There we go. Let's do it. Oh no, that's super super villain. Do we want superhero slash super? Hold on, no, no, that's not what we want. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm I'm bad with names. So, do you want to just go with a, like a generic name, like um, like PicoSec multi multiversal or something like that, or, or <laughs> just do you like want something some that's like more descriptive, some super generic like company name, yeah. like that makes that doesn't like, mean you... anything at all. <laughs> Yeah, that's what we I mean. Do you want to go something that's more something descriptive of what they do, or just like, uh, you know, like, like, like if they're if they're kind of a mercenary group, I was thinking more of like a, I mean, if you want to make it to like a corporation, like that'd be good. Like making a weird, like really generic, non-descriptive name like that. Or if we want to make it more of like a mercenary kind of thing, we could go with like a one or two word like group name or something like that. Let's see. Well, there's also like you could think of like in terms of triads or... Yeah, yeah, um, that's what I mean. Like a one or two word kind of thing. Zakuskas and, <laughs> you know, those kind of... Yeah. <laughs> Yakuska or whatever. Um, Yakuza. Yakuza, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what I'm looking for. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not I'm not part of their group, so I don't really know. Oh, really? I would never could have. I'm not on yeah. their Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> I never would have known you weren't in the Yakuza VG. I've seen him do some crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Does the chat have any ideas? That might be I, good. I didn't I didn't know the the Yakuza had so much influence in Australia. <laughs> yeah. But... Well, they, I guess they do. they do. It's Asian <laughs> as fuck down there. <laughs> oh, good. I'm watching the chat, by the way, so you guys can feel free to like. All right. So while we in. while we think of ideas for the name, uh -huh. um, there's a couple other questions we need to answer. First of all, alien races. Um. I mean, I guess that's not a question with a question mark, but I think you know what the question is. <laughs> alien races, alien period. Races. Right. Now, there's, you know, there's obviously different variants of it. Like, you can have tentacle monsters, you know, as an alien race. Or you can, <laughs> or you can like, just dumb it down in terms of just aliens with personified features. They look like humans, but they yeah. might have you know, bigger ears or, you know, whatever. <laughs> just big fucking ears. So, that's it. Yeah, that's like... Like Star Trek kind of aliens in terms of Vulcans and Klingons and yeah, stuff like, like that. that. I, I think they, they just very human, but they have a slight different attribute to them. Well, I don't know. I guess it depends because like the reason Star Trek and stuff like that is really limited by that kind of thing is obviously money. Like, you know, it's a lot easier to put like just makeup on people and make them human than make them like big, weird, tentacle beasts. Well, we saw what George Lucas did. With Star Wars, once he, you know, had the technology and the, uh, the means to add all the CGI stuff in, so it doesn't necessarily improve it if we, <laughs> we go too far away. But 
I don't well, know, just aliens in general, it's just more of a, do you want to be dealing with aliens? Do you want, like, because it, it does alter the story and the bounties because aliens, you know, completely different than humans. I don't think it makes sense to add aliens because the chances, well, if you have aliens in there, I can almost foresee humanity trying to bind itself together and even, like, you have all these warring governments, you have this dilapidated universe. Right. And you would, it would kind of come together, I think, us versus them. It's just how humans are built. It's how we think. I don't think well, you'd have this warring government, and then all of a sudden there's aliens coming in. Are these? Are they violent? Are they waging war on us? Are they just kind of yeah. passive? Are they just there? Are they merchants? Are they? I just, yeah. It does and then lend I'll, itself to racism and other like ethical issues mm -hmm. along with those and, and the, the same yeah. I, I agree with that if these all these different governments were all human governments then yeah i think they would all be coming together but then you could also think of it oh, the yeah. way that maybe Empires it is maybe it is a bunch of different like aliens and stuff and empire of the big years yeah and then and then you got <laughs> and then you got this bounty hunter group maybe that are all different kind of people different kind of and they all come together to make money and like do these bounties and that's why they're mm -hmm. It just depends on if you guys are feeling having aliens. I mean, we could definitely work it in either way, I think. Well, look at it and see what are, what are we looking at the term aliens trying to be? Is aliens just your generic humanish looking green aliens that are walking the earth or outer space or are they just aliens to us? Like it could be they could be different races that shouldn't technically be aliens. They're just different types of people different types of well yeah yeah that, I, th I think that's what we mean we mean like ex like but extraterrestrials there you go. but uh you, you could also instead of having it just people one after another or just different organizations just all, all everyone technically quote unquote living in peace where you would always have like they do in uh in real life where they have the, the kind of black market alley kind of stuff. There's people that do stuff behind others' backs. And that yeah. could be parts right I mean, then and there. I kind of got this from the <laughs> chat. TKS says, how long have humans been in space? I guess that makes sense because if we've been in space long enough, right, and I don't really see us being near Earth. I don't know about you guys, but I don't really see... I, I see us being... This not being like an Earth-based... Well, yeah. If we're mm. with other solar systems, it's not really possible. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what yeah. I'm saying. I'm just like, yeah, I don't see Earth being in the picture. I don't see us ever going to Earth. That's what I'm saying. And like, if we've been in space long enough, maybe maybe we have became at peace with all these other races. Probably just a norm. Seeing and all the other and it's, yeah, it's just like completely normal. But then, though, all the different like like ideas started splitting up into different governments, and then you know you can have all different races mixed in in each government. I, there's a lot of different ways we could do it. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I, th I think that adding <laughs> aliens just to a small extent in terms of, like, Romulans and Klingons and Balkans does, then we can have more ethical issues and we can have more, like, the, the troubles can be segregation between races and the troubles can be those kind of things. Like, and you, it leads itself to better storylines if we have that rather than everyone being human. Uh, and if we do that, can we uh, can we have like androids? Yeah. Yep. AI, AI would would definitely be a yeah. thing. Especially since you know, like me and you talked over a couple of my skills and stuff. And especially if a if androids are a thing, and maybe even seen as like you know the nor like uh, a person, like not just like you know a service robot. If they're like, I think that would actually help out me, give me more opportunities to use some of my skills. You know. Plus, I mean, we have an engineer here, so just repair wash those vacuums. Nuts, Ruffy. <laughs> <laughs> just repair those like, wash automated buckets. vacuums. It would sweet for a while. <laughs> All right, so be op personal butler. No, I mean, if we don't I, have AI, I, I, then some of my skills are gonna have like no use ever. <laughs> so I like I like aliens in a personified sense. I don't want to mm. have to make up like different crazy body parts. I just like to make one particular feature. Yeah. That this alien has that separates them, and then like maybe their motives or their their um, their customs and their um, their things are different. But just generally, I don't want to have to explain how many tentacles this particular alien has. You know, like I think that gets <laughs> so a little too. Yeah, I don't yeah. think one or two. What is it? What's your deal with tentacles, like, man? <laughs> uh, 
I I don't want tentacles to be in our story. So <laughs> there, I was I'm haunted by tentacles. He uh, just he yeah. just wants a blue yeti that vibrates. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, that, I, I don't think having like a few like max of three would have uh, have a big problem with yeah like the, the, how they are like you could have one that's short one that, that are also like furry and have ears like antennas or whatever like that wouldn't be a big thing like all right whatever so moving from aliens and we will have to go back to aliens and t- like talking about like some known races and stuff like that so we can get an idea of them the other thing we need to talk about is supernatural supernatural yay supernatural nay what are we talking what are we talking supernatural um, well, a good example would be from the Shadowrunner would be shamanism, right? Shamanism is something that's used in Shadowrunner to summon demons. To um, you know, it, in mm. particular, that one case it talks about um, you know using the shaman as in a spiritual sense to uh, heal um, on a on a spiritual side as well as a physical side. So, supernatural could lead into um, Particular types of weapons or something like that, but how how do people feel about supernatural elements? I I don't really see supernatural like like that kind of stuff really fitting into a sci-fi campaign. Uh, I could see like anomalies and like weird space shit happen happening, you know, like Star Trek style, <laughs> you know, like there's always weird shit happening in space. But as far as like supernatural kind of stuff ghosts demons that kind of thing i don't really see that really fitting into the type of campaign that we're running i don't i don't see it fitting into sci-fi either but i think it's neat i think it's an interesting thing that could bring in some diversity between different types of people like maybe one type of people is uh, spiritual and that's where they get a lot of their power that's how Mm. that group of people operates so uh, you would essentially like, I mean, we're supernatural in, in a lot of sci-fi things, and it's not particularly a very common theme in sci-fi because usually if you want to explain something and you want it to be fantastical, you either go supernatural or sci-fi. Yeah, Going yeah. both is like, it seems a bit redundant and because it's like you I, can either explain something away as being super high technology or you can explain it away as being magical or something like that. And I think, I think we could do that kind of thing that you're talking about, Jin, but it's not technically supernatural like it's some kind of like weird space like quirk in the, in that area or that they get the power this power for some reason and like if it's a sci-fi theme i think everything should ultimately even if we don't know it should ultimately be explainable you know like i think that's yeah we're as well, i feel like it, I, I, technically we could go our own way with this too if we wanted to. Uh, if we wanted, if we wanted to have like not in a sense just like regular magic, where like ooh, boom, I cast a fireball, whatever. Uh, it could just be, and as I'm watching the chat, just like TK said, which is uh, magic fueled by tech. Uh, yeah, we could. It, it could oh. be. Uh, it could be just stuff that that technology has gained itself to get to having these certain abilities not like it has to be magic magic it just uh certain things happen like like you couldn't i don't know yeah different examples what i'm saying is there could be powers and stuff like that and people could have this tech and all that all that i'm perfectly happy with being in the game but the theme of supernatural abilities, they're actually being stuff that's unexplained and stuff like that. And, like, just you really can't explain. Like, ghosts and demons and stuff like that, I don't really see fitting in. But, like, I, magic I by what, tech and stuff like Supernatural is a very broad explanation. It might be better to refine that down. Because, like, obviously, like, on one side of the coin, you have like mysterious things happening, or you know, like energy that can't be explained through tech or, or whatever. The other hand, you have fireballs and demons, and you know, and stuff like that. Like, do you want characters to be throwing fireballs? Yes or no? Do you think fireballs have a you know sp- magic spells have a place in this universe? Uh, I think it's like gonna I be saying, hard. I, I, 
I don't know about fireballs, like stuff, like like enhancements. I mean, we're uh, talking about having the ability for machines and whatnot to give you like increased speed or uh, increased strength. I think that could be something we could look at. But other, like literally cast magic, that would be a little bit more epic. Yeah. All right. So the way I'm getting or the feeling that I'm getting is that a blatant use of the word magic would probably be not what we're looking for. Whereas unexplained things or like cults that are based around what they think is supernatural, even if it doesn't yeah. come to pass or if it does come to pass would be okay. Any you know, belief in supernatural obviously is going to occur anyway, uh -huh. whether you're yeah. in any universe. But yeah, I, so. I think, I think even if we don't, figure out what it is ultimately it should be explainable explainable right? yeah like it shouldn't actually be supernatural because i think that kind of breaks away from the whole sci-fi theme like it, it, even like demons from from you know even demons could be explained like they're from another dimension or something like that i, I just yeah. think that the theme of supernatural and like you know ultimately being completely unexplainable and all that is just doesn't quite fit with what i think we're try all trying to go for but uh, right. just to so let's yeah just, just to go in where aiden was saying i do kind of see in my own mind if we are in the far future and we're checking out governments and things and things i'm i'm kind of visualizing this as a dilapidated kind of universe i would see some people moving toward right? some are, are dilapidated some are you know not obviously um there's gonna be piety uh yeah in some cases there, extreme piety oh yeah like religion um, religious organizations and stuff yeah yeah and it, it, you know it doesn't necessarily need to be your brand of uh you know judeo-christian monotheistic religion oh, that's i think they're definitely sh yeah definitely should just be the sun god you're believing in of alpha mm. centauri i definitely uh, think there should be orga like, like religious organizations yeah but yeah. Yeah. necessarily their beliefs being true is what no no yeah, yeah. scientific naturalism not gonna have you talking to god like. yeah <laughs> <laughs> unless that's what you want all right so i i, I think we're pretty like happy with just like this, using it as a theme, but no one's like casting spells or anything yeah. like that. Anything, you know, reasonably like we can denounce wizards as being charlatans and, you know, and things like that. So we're, we're at where we're at currently on Earth, basically. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to make sure everyone was happy that we weren't going to be casting kind of colds and stuff like that. All right. That's so, your example um, spell, not magic missile. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> kind of cool. Kind magic cool. missile is a um, classic. Yeah, so we're going horrible. with, at least we've been talking about going steampunk, cyberpunk style mm -hmm. with our technology. Um, does anyone have any sort of like refinements or, or like what kind of technology do you think is going to be in this universe as like a primary source? Are we just going to talk about, like we talked about warp gates, for instance, uh -huh. like what kind of weapons and ex are, are people being mostly going to be using? Well, I think me and you talked about this VG, didn't we? Uh, as far as like what we're using as like, and I think I might even talk to Renzo about this at a, a separate point, but to bring the the steampunk kind of theme in more, which I really like, and I think is gonna add like a unique flavor to our like sci-fi <laughs> cyberpunk kind of thing. I'm thinking maybe we have some technology that that basically makes uh, steam power and like coal and stuff like that way way more efficient. Right. Uh, where like our basic fuel would be still coal, like we're we're burning coal, but it's much more efficient. So like coal can power ships, it can power like all these huge technologies. But we're still looking for this resource that, and like you know, you can have planets kind of be more or less rich depending on like how much kind of raw coal ore and stuff they have, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, but I, I'm open to other themes. I was just thinking that would that'd be a cool way to bring it in. Because I think before this, we s talked about having like weapons powered by steam cartridges and stuff like that, too. We were all talking about it. 
And I thought that would be like an yeah. interesting way to bring what if, all that together. What if it was not just necessarily simplistic cult? What if it was because uh, we're talking? Well, <laughs> if we're talking outer space, we're talking cyberpunk, we're talking whatever. Uh-huh. Maybe it's just uh, it's a special type. Maybe it's evolved over the years, and there's it's scarce that we have to look for it as well. It could just be added on to uh, the resource that we're doing. Uh, uh, what I mean by this is there there could still be generic, but maybe there's there's that generic one which is is good and it's still workable. But maybe there's also this better one that we can find that would allow us to have. Uh, so, a, so what you're saying basically better, is, yeah, a better like, input or output from it. I mean, sorry. Like it wouldn't necessarily be coal. Right. It could be like another resource that we use, like coal. But yes, yeah. Like I, my my idea doesn't necessarily have to be coal. What I'm just thinking is like something natural, like a resource that we're having to find to use as fuel, not something we can create on our own. And I think that adds kind of that flavor in there where, like, you know, everybody's right. scrounging to find this material. Then you can have, like, mining planets that aren't inhabited that are just, like, have lots of this kind of coal. Uh, organizations could have these planets. You know, they can be more or less rich depending on, like, this could be a big export, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I like That would work really well. All these these governments that are almost like corporations that are trying to find this essentially a fossil fuel. Yeah, exactly. And this is why the universe is kind of turning in on itself at the same time. This is because there's maybe it was very abundant at one point. So there's all this technology that's lost that no one really quite understands. And it's, you know, everything's kind of going by the wayside as as this fossil fuel dwindles down nothing. Yeah, I think that's... So would we we'd reference it as some kind of like coal fusion or... We could come uh, up with a name. I mean like... Like a carbon yeah. carbon fusion that we've... You know, the, like because we're talking about a, a hyper-efficient way of, of you know, like the, basically the characters are going, can you believe we used to burn this stuff? Like what the hell are we thinking? You know, like yeah. back in history. But, yeah. you know, now now we've developed a way of like splitting the... Yeah, the, the oh yeah, like a new process that uses it. Like yeah, we used to burn this shit. Like you know how much money we <laughs> wasted burning this. <laughs> Ciphering the so, minerals from yeah, the but if I mean, core. Yes, yeah, something like uh, you know, <laughs> like a coal fusion or or something along the lines of that. Um, does it factor into weapons, or is we- weapons a steam and fuel is is coal? Like. Or is are you shooting? Is your gun powered by coal as well? The only thing, like yeah, it can have like packs, like energy packs. Like, an, you know, like if you think Fallout, when you're using like energy weapons, you've got like the energy cells and stuff like that. But it can be powered by the same thing. The, I know we talked about having it powered by steam before, but if we're going mm. for like more realism, it depends on what you want, guys want to do. I just, in my own head, I don't really see how steam is going to be captured and kept hot enough to actually be used as like in a power space f- yeah as a power <laughs> source so like, i mean if you're just gonna have like steam cartridges oh, it would be space. more pressurized air than than like actual steam at that point yeah, it pressurized air can do quite a lot um so about like liquefied coal or something like that just or spray goo everywhere like- Carbon dense coal. <laughs> yeah, we're, bar- yeah. we're burning diamonds essentially. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that. that's what our fuel source could be. It could just be diamonds. <laughs> just burning diamonds. Like diamonds are yeah, not are not jewelry anymore. They're fucking fuel. All right. Okay. And then that can make so like people we, that are wearing. We not believe the cost of the pump. The cost of the pump is ridiculous <laughs> in the future. <laughs> <laughs> and then like people are still wearing yep. diamonds, and we're like, what the fuck? This is so expensive. <laughs> What are you doing? So Give me that. I need to power fuel. my gun. <laughs> well, I mean, we can we we can manufacture diamonds now, like really, yeah. really I tiny, think... shitty ones. High but... density coal, or carbon. Is this just carbon or coal? <clears throat> that could bring uh, the reason why the if we're still thinking about opposing factions. Uh huh. Or not just say two, say like whatever, however many way you want. That could like this resource could be added on into why they are try they are hostile towards each other because they're trying to claim yeah, yeah. this resource for themselves. Mm, yeah. um, 
I mean, like it, not not this is the only thing, but it, it just could add into it if we wanted to. Do. For sure. <laughs> All right. So with uh, let's say that we know that the fuel source is going to be in some in some ends like like a high density uh, carbon or coal fusion which, you know, is going to be alluded to as being diamonds or, you know, there'll be stones generally. Like, you'll, you'll have, like, a you'll be able to hold a bit of fuel in your hand rather than it being a gas or a liquid or something. That'll be a solid fuel. Um, so let's go back to the weapons. Like, how are the weapons do we, we want to go? Well, you just call it um, crystal. Like, because we talked about... <laughs> yeah, crystal. Crystal would be great. Um, Sounds like something why else. Why not, like, but... we're talking about... <laughs> crystal fuel. <laughs> and a job. Um, <laughs> so we're talking like around like steam weapons and like energy weapons and vibrous weapons and stuff like that. What? what how do we? How are we going to do that? How are we going to find that? What's everyone's opinion on steam versus you know other more traditional forms of shooters? I don't know how I feel about uh, like steam powered weapons. Uh, and I mean, if it's going to to access or use the steam right away, maybe then it could be possible. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But I see, I, I could see steam, of course, powering machines because it's of course processed right away and it's it, <laughs> just taking it on right from the source. Uh, I, yeah. I have no problem with the with the like if you really want to go that far, you're talking about beam. Uh, like, if you want to give it an example, beam swords, whatever, I would not have a problem with that. But that would be something that could be could be thought of, but I don't know if I see that as well. Mm -hmm. All our weapons have tiny little boilers in the bottom of them, <laughs> right in the hill. Just <laughs> tiny little ones. No, I, like, the boiler broken my gun. Yeah, I, I'm just not carry around gallons of water to burn for steam. <laughs> you just have like a backpack of water and just like attached to your gun. You're just like, yeah. Uh, uh, no, personally, I'm not feeling gunpowder. Like, I don't, I don't really want like, I don't know, because I'm, I'm thinking like the steampunk and like the cyberpunk and the sci-fi kind of thing. I'm thinking like black powder weapons or gunpowder weapons. Like, I just. I think that's too traditional, like, to, you know, like, real life, and I'm trying to kind of give a lot of flavor to the setting, and I, I think that'll... I, I don't really think black powder will fit in very much. I don't know. Yeah. I think we can make it a lot more unique, All right, so, is what I'm saying, I guess. So they're not, they're not going to be steam-powered guns, you know, they're like... Mm -hmm. That's a bit of a stretch. They can still have that steampunk feel to them. But they don't necessarily have to be powered by steam or anything like that. So, along the lines of like a, a crystal dust or a, you know, a something like that. Yeah, that, we have... You know, we found explosive. Like a, a highly com like compressed chamber of crystal dust or something like that. It's not going to come up in story often, but just so we know how guns. Yeah, they're like little, generally little work. energy packs that can be changed out or something like that. That have like the small the combustion one. power plants. Yeah, yeah. like it's a little tiny fusion so, reactor. Yeah. <laughs> Do you mean yeah. so the same <laughs> out like a little bit ma more. like a magazine is or or something different? Yeah, yeah like it can give it's, you that kind like a power of pack, generally. yeah, it'll give you that kind of uh, gun feel, but not with like projectiles. Like you're not changing out projectiles; you're changing out energy packs. All right, so I guess the thing that I have to ask is is that are energy packs, if if you have to replace them in your weapons, are they going to be part of the game? Or are they just going to be, like, something that's part of the story but not part of, you know, like, I, I don't think you they, have to buy energy packs or anything like that? I don't think they necessarily need to be uh, part right, of so the game. so they'll just be a way of telling the story, yeah. not, not necessarily a way of yeah. in the game. All right, so you have, then we would have to keep basically, up and how big these energy packs are, how many shots you can get out of them, where they cost, and yeah. all that. I, I don't think so, we need to handle that. I think it adds a lot more hassle than it yeah, does exactly. story. If from them, like, basically, like, if you guys come up with your own weapons, because it's just a way of telling the story, like, if your characters come up with their own weapons with the idea that they'll be, like, some kind of powered weapon, uh -huh. you know, with this, this pack, or they'll be just straight up, you know, like, it stabs, it goes through its target kind of thing. You can come up with your own kind of energy swords. You can come up with your own kind of like energy mm -hmm. scythes. Any kind of melee weapon plus, you know, 
yes. whether it just stabs them or whether it's like an energy powered yeah weapon. especially especially and since then the shooters just, the same thing these are just energy packs like they they power the weapon the weapon's what takes care of what it shoots like if it shoots lasers or something like that if it's a vibro blade these energy packs are what makes the sword vibrate they're just like an energy source is what i'm thinking and like maybe they're yeah. Maybe there's different companies and stuff, but maybe these energy packs can just be interchangeable between weapons or something like that. Because I mean, you know, like there's energy packs. So yeah. All right. So I think that's 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 pretty cool. That sort of sorts out our tech issues as to how people are going to fight and how people are going to transport. I think that's pretty much what we need to start the game. Um, we have to go back to um, the organization. We still need a name for the bounty hunter guild, and we need to start making or at least think of some races. Um, that would have their own empires. Like races will pop up all the time in terms of just a, a very human humanized alien, which will have a few features which will come. But which races are important that are going to have their own um, empire or federation or Klangons? You know, out- Can we have Klangons? Klangons. <laughs> uh, just a thought that popped in my mind is it, there are, we could uh, if we're thinking of having. Uh, races that are going to make potentially be running places that we're going to be setting up potentially uh would there also be races that would be you know technically not not in the literal sense but enslaved like yeah they, that are yeah, put definitely. under as the workers of the races like a worker yeah, race slave races yeah definitely like the the weaker mm-hmm. races will you know be preyed upon by the the stronger races the most periods definitely yeah, and then you get, then then like like this kind of dystopian kind of thing really adds to the flavor of like a lot of organizations that are fighting to against that, like you know freedom fighters or or the green movement or whatever you know, like with the our, us burning yeah. the fossil fuels and stuff. <laughs> like yeah, it, it oh, just so like this kind of flavor. Even in space. Yeah, like this kind of flavor so like, adds I, a lot of different organizations that we could. I guess the big flavor divide here is are we going to have organizations based on races or are we going to have organizations based on like even just literally corporate organizations or are we going to have a mixture of both personally Uh, i personally i like the thing of like there being us being in space for like a long time and kind of melding with all these like it's just the normal to see all these aliens and like we don't really think of each other as like you know Oh, it's that other race, you know. It's more like okay, more like a, you know, everyone's like a coalition. But then, ideally, like they split up versus ideals and corporations and stuff like that, rather than races. Because while racial tension can be fun, it also, you know, like it can it can be it can and, dominate the story if yeah. you get too much into it. It can um, dominate the story, and so, it also can be, especially like streaming it. It can be like a little awkward as well. Uh, not that that's necessarily like a, a huge thing, yeah. but you know, like. <laughs> but uh, all right, yeah. I, I it just depends on how much you guys are feeling like having a story based on races and stuff like that. Like, sure. So the races, or not races. Uh, <laughs> Slavery would be more of the one low. organization versus another, not uh, yeah, a race thing. It might be it, like a... It can be... Remember, like, an individual story can be about race, but we're talking about the overarching structure of how how the star systems have been divided into who controls what. You know, And we've, we've yeah. come to a point where the major, majority of people are just like, we accept people of this race, we accept people of that race, but on the individual planets or on a small scale, you might still have racist... Yeah, it's uh, giant space America. Corporate. Like we're just a huge melting <laughs> pot, but there's still <laughs> racial tension. Say. But no, no, we could we could find right. like a corporation that's just like Willy Wonka, and he just has like this one race that's like his slave workers. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> just in a factory. So, we're like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> Let these little orange people go. So, like, what are you doing? So with the the organizations, um, what what why are the organizations in control of these plants? What 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 business do they do that that gets them to be you know like what they've formed a government out of a corporation basically or, or a federation out of a corporation or I'm thinking like big oil have... barons like not oil yeah. but you know, big yeah. crystal barons I guess that okay. not 
not only just big companies, they could also have had uh, like a follower group that there could be no government on the, those planets. Uh, they could just have like followers and they're just the, everyone on that planet looks to them as the, what are we going to do? We go to you for answers kind of uh, company. Well, let's, let's make one of them an oil baron. Like, let's just say one of these organizations is going to be a resource focused yeah. organization. And then, then you could have right? like religion based ones. You could have ones that are based on uh, fighting back against like, like slavery, uh, like the those kind of ones that are more, you know, like the the ones that are like freedom fighters could have like a smaller area that they control and they could be like rebel kind of thing. Then you got like big companies, and it's just yeah. like capitalism taken to the extreme, you know. All right. So let's let's just say um, that one of them is an oil baron. Mm -hmm. Like let's let's then think of another. And I Derek gave some great options there. What's what's another big um, federation style uh, structured organization that's going to have a control of multiple planets. What's their motive? Just throw out another one and we'll write it down uh, from a list of ideas. I feel like I'm talking too much. Anybody else have any ideas? <laughs> well, I mean, even like when I was saying, we, I know a lot of a lot of times we don't want to go over this this topic, but it, it could uh, it could have. I don't want to. I don't know how it would fit in, but not not in the literal sense of it, but like, like how you have stuff that are religious, not not like a religion yeah. I'm talking about, but it would have some kind of standing, and this is why people follow it. Okay, so I mean, the only thing that like when we have these um, things, this is what I'm thinking. I guess it doesn't really matter too much, but. If we do have a bunch of um, a bunch of star systems controlled by a religious entity, then basically that that uh, planet, if we go to a planet that's controlled by it, has to they basically have to be um, religious. Like I, you, you can't have a story about uh, you know right. that that planet is a cult of this because you already have assigned them to that corporation. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it shouldn't matter too much. But remember, these are, these guys are warring. They still do the same things, you know. Obviously, like even the religious uh, organizations are still going to recognize that they they want to get the resources from yeah this and, planet and stuff like that. so. And like they don't necessarily everybody doesn't have to be warring against everybody else. There could still be like you know export and import, but there could be like certain factions that don't like each other, uh, and they fight against each other. And, you know, and, like, even even these organizations, even if they are about exporting and stuff, they're still, like, have their own section of space that they control, you know, like a, like a country. I mean, if you're thinking about, like, the world, it'd be like a country. Like, countries export stuff, but they still control, you know, a part of land, a uh, part of the land. Oh, God, there went my voice. <coughs> yeah, but, you know, like, they control the section. So, what like, every... Oh, go ahead, sorry after a technology because it is the future and all and rather than them wanting resources or religion they're just focusing on trying to improve technology uh, sort In of any means possible kind of way I think if you're going to go that route you then you take it to like an AI controlled yeah. thing well, they, they are be. the technology like, kind of deal like they're the, oh, the they're monstrous rose, machine terror Right, so, <laughs> so like, if we want to take it that route, then let's let's make a federation that's simply like run by AI, kind of deal. My my Is other my other idea for like another federation, just before we like cinch down everything, uh, is like maybe since we're doing like really heavy augment stuff, maybe there's one company that kind of controls augmentations. And, like, everybody mm. wants augmentations, obviously, because it improves you, uh, and it improves what you can do, your capabilities, but maybe they're really expensive, or they're very controlled, and that kind of stuff, and then that'll open up, like, a black market kind of thing. Uh, yeah. And what about areas that are, like, not run by, say, a big corporate or group or whatever, and they're just kind of banded together how you would see a lot of times barbarians. 
Um, you know, I'm, in a sense, I, that, I think there will be that, uh, neutral they're, zones. They're, they're, right. Well, in a sense, I'm talking about these these groups um, just sent out, or not really sent out, but just going out just for, say, like killing just because they can. Uh, hunting Space down people, Vikings. hunting down resources. <laughs> like uh, just, reaches and stuff like that. I guess, like yeah. Literally a, you know, a, a devouring parasitic kind of yeah. evil race. Alright. Um, I think we touched on this and I didn't quite catch it. Um, that big oil baron corporation. Now, I think there was kind of a discussion on world laws and slavery and, and racism and how it's it exists, but it doesn't really exist. Like, it's not... Um, yeah, like oh. like it is now. Like, if you see somebody that's really racist, you're like, yeah, wow. Right. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, there's still racism. It's just not acceptable, socially acceptable. Yeah. I almost see... I don't know. I don't know. Again, obviously, there's like this... Um, under that big oil baron... Uh, you could almost have like an apartheid system. If you're going to make them dystopian, this evil oil fossil fuel corporation, mm -hmm. you can make them as evil as you want them to be. And then you can almost, against that, on one end, you have this massive corporate entity. And on the other end, you could have this almost proletarian social justice uh, society. And then there, the technology society could have virtually no morals, like you said, because they're AI. And they're whole purpose is the continuation or the rediscovery of lost technology or fucking or scions, man. If you if you sort of make like if you let's say you make uh, you know we've got almost half a dozen ideas for um, uh, I guess you'd even call them uh, 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 federations or whatever empires. If you make them diametrically opposed, so the oil baron is like like anti. You know, uh, is apartheid, so they, you know, they're they're really against a certain race, and then you make another empire which is based on that certain race, then they're going to be warring, right? And you can do that for all of them and make them against, you know, one particular thing about the others, or you can make some that are, uh, are okay with each other, or you know, that, that aren't warring between mm -hmm. the two. So, if you have an oil baron and they're going to be very strong and they're going to want to take over things so they can get the resources, obviously they're probably going to be at a mild state of war. For territorial control, we can, um, and then you can, you can touch on factors like you know, anti-religious or um, you know, anti-AI or you know, racist against robots or something like that. Like we, we could also do like oil bear in in the sense of it's a big company, like they're super corporate, like they're they're just like hostile taking over stuff, like with money, and like they're just super corporate, yeah, like, like super professional even, but like kind of dicks, <laughs> you know, like. And they're just like taking shit over, and yeah, like you you, you can go that route too. That one company that just wants to to combine everybody yeah. into under their flag that like, says we we want to rule the whole galaxy. Like they we they want to be a monopoly, but maybe they're not doing yeah. it with like warships and stuff like that. Because 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 the thing I'm thinking is like if they're a big oil baron, then they don't want to piss everybody off necessarily because they want to export their oil, right? Uh, and they and we don't, I don't know if we want to limit them being like super racist against anybody because then that person would be really weak because if this is like a one big oil baron, these people wouldn't have any fuel, you know. So like, unless we want like like warring oil baron kind of people, like multiple companies, multiple ideals. All right, so here's what I've got just to sort of like get us on a roll with uh, locking this in. And I think this is pretty pretty cool. So let's make – I've got a list of um, six states here. Now, that includes neutral state um, and it includes the uh, the killers or whatever, you know, just like the – The killers? We just don't care who you are. We just we, – like not band? the killers, the band. Not I apologize band. to any fans. Brandon um, Flowers, planet. <laughs> right. They're like the, the parasitic – you know, Reaper kind of just go through and devour everything they can, mm -hmm. you know, take everything. So they have, they have no morals, no ethics, no thought process, just they kill. Kill, kill, kill. Right? So we have the oil, the oil baron who are the corporate setting that um, is profiteering off war. Yeah. Right, we have the religious sector, which are, they typically are in dilapidated 
Um, uh, they take over dilapidated uh, stations uh, that have been abandoned by either you know either of the others, and they take that over and turn it into religious because the people there are struggling because you know maybe the oral baron or the AI, the augmentation manufacturer or some of the other federation left them, and now they don't have the support they need. So someone comes in as a religious missionary, converts them all, turns that country into a religious state. Um, and then we have two others, the Augmentation Manufacturing Federation and the, the AI Factoring, the technology. And they're in a tech race with each other, right? So they're both, at, they're both warring and they're both trying to develop more advanced technologies to beat the other. Uh-huh. And that's, that creates a, two warring factions. And then you have the, the neutrals and the parasites. The neutrals are just basically out there surviving wherever they can, however they can. And the parasites are out there killing whoever they can, any way they can. And I definitely think you might want to think about maybe not necessarily like putting them on a map or something like that, but like a rebel group that's trying to fight against like, yeah, you know, they're, they're trying to fight for like freedom and like trying to fight for a more utopian versus dystopian society. Are they just the good guys then? Or like it sounds like, or what's bad about them? Do they have any well, I negatives mean, to them? Like you know, you can have like bad people in, fighters. in a group like that, but I like like yeah, they're. I mean, I I just think I think if we're gonna have like a big dystopian oil baron specifically, or like stuff that has like where there's still like racism or even slavery and stuff like that, there are gonna naturally be people that are opposed to it, and those people are naturally gonna organize themselves into into groups that are gonna right, fight so that kind let's, of stuff. How about? How about for that situation, we have certain anti, you know, so whatever we call these uh, federations, Mm -hmm. you can have like an anti-oil baron federation, which don't necessarily align themselves with anything. But let's say they've, their rebellion has struck up such a cause on that city that they've actually taken over the the planet. And then they've just, they're simply defined by being anti-oil baron and they'll fight the oil oil barons. Mm -hmm. They won't necessarily always want to war with anyone else. But they will always fight anyone from the corporate oil baron federation. Yeah, that and kind like, of thing. If, and that would that would follow with all of the ones like anti religious, anti AI, anti manufacturer, whatever. Yeah, and like if we want to, cool. if we and that'll give us an opportunity. Like if we ever get to the point where we want to take down a specific corporation or something like that, that'll give us the uh, in. You know, It'd give you contacts in the uh, the yeah. rebel groups. <laughs> And like we've yeah, made the empire and really... the rebellion as much as we tried to stay away from the empire and the rebellion. <laughs> it's a <laughs> bunch of empires and a bunch of rebellious people, though. Like I just think that's natural, though. Right. I mean, you know, like unless you want to go with like a big utopian society, which is just as generic as like you know rebellion. Well, if we're gonna All have right, quite so... a few uh, uh, rebellion and empires and whatnot, shouldn't we also technically have a bunch of neutral zones too? I think this will come yeah, up. Yeah, no, there will be neutrals. Yeah. There'll okay. be neutrals. There's going to be, um, as I said, this is the the four main um, ones are going to be the Oil Baron Federation, the Religious Sector, the Augmentation Manufacturers. So that's a that's going to be, again, sort of corporate, um, but they're basically the people who develop the augmentations. And you said there's going to be two that was going against each other? There's, yeah, there's going to be the, the technological AI, right? So they're... Mm-hmm. Um, a computer, like a robot race, that right. have they're at war with the augmentation manufacturers, and they're at war because they're in a gotcha. like, like okay. a race for technology. Kind of thing. Gotcha. The gotcha. oil baron is the one that's profiting from all this because they're basically funding the war to keep it going and making all the money from selling resources to those two warring states. And then outside that that set of four, you then have a neutral, which is just basically like very planet specific issues. Not yeah. part of the the grand scheme of things, but they're just basically there to survive. You'll see a and, lot of like again dilapidated. And these will be you know, like, like, that. like this isn't just one huge group. Like this is a bunch of this is just anybody yeah. that's not included in the other groups. And it'll what be if they're planet so they're wide? It's not connected. Well, they're anyone that's not connected to the other four, or anyone that's not connected to the anti groups for the other four either. Uh-huh. And then the last one was the parasite ones that are just like the feared race because they kill everything. What if we look at? Uh, this is probably less thought because I like what the others are going with. Um, one planet, in a sense, where uh, 
people can go to to take refuge because it, it, it's a planet that follows their own orders, their own set of stuff where they don't they don't take any uh, you know kind of influence from any corporation, any uh, other side trying to influence them to get to uh, go onto their side and help them out. It's just a neutral. It's just like one big neutral planet neutral city whatever that, that people could just come to to get away from everything basically like right so cheese. that would fall under the the neutral faction like there will be a neutral right. faction they're not going to be a faction per se they're just not going to be any others and there'll be very planet specific problems on that one if right. they're neutral they'll just I'm not, they're probably I'm not talking about under under like the uh, oral baron or whatever just like a normal city no company no whatever into, into right, that's what that's what the neutral that that's what we're talking no, about. Saying right. So the, yeah. I'm saying there's going to be four factions, right? Okay. Four like factions that have a, a purpose and a function and a desire. You're going to have one faction that doesn't, which is going to be the neutral faction, and that that responds to yeah. anyone that isn't part of those four factions. And then you're going to have another faction that doesn't have a cause, except to kill everyone they well, can get to. One one thing about this like Reaver faction, I think it would be a good idea for. Like, you know, on the sheet where it says the, like, uh, the big, like, I don't know, I don't know what it says, I don't have the sheet in front of me, but isn't there, like, a thing where it's, like, the big threat that's coming or something like that? Like, I don't think necessarily the Reavers should be here now, because I think if that was the case, the, these, these corporations, if, like, this, this group is destroying everything that they come across, these corporations would have banded together to try to fight it and i think it might come issues. later and like that could give okay. us a new whole thing to fight against later on right instead yeah, yeah. of it just being it a whole faction because if they're just like laying waste to everything and they're just destroying everybody it could be the the threat of it coming the rumor of it coming more than them actually being yeah. here already yeah i think yeah. that makes sense all right so um how about we take a break uh all right that sounds sounds good to me. I can uh, I can take a break. I am all for this. Uh, and I think <laughs> we're gonna come back with and start doing uh, character creation, or we still got stuff to do on world creation. Uh, there's a little bit more to do with world creation in terms of names. So if you if you can come up with any names for the bounty guilds or any of the factions while you're getting a drink or anything, please all do. Right. All right, yeah, uh, so we'll, we're going to take a break. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. I'm going to leave you guys with some music. Uh, the mics are still going to be on and all that. But, uh, yeah, I'll leave you guys with some music, and we're all going to stand up, go get some drinks. So you guys feel free to do the same thing. We'll be back in a couple of minutes.